Hey guys, welcome back. My name is Bill. This is Yo-Yo Tech. I have been getting a lot of questions lately hey, about so some digital home automation, and that is, what can I do to automate my home? Not necessarily the software or the hardware or the technology, but just in general. What do I need to do to make my home automation and my smart home a smarter home? So guys, as always, if you haven't had a chance yet, please take a minute to subscribe. Uh, new content coming out all of the time and we'd love to have you on board. There's also a little bell down there if you'd like to get notified as soon as new content comes out, click that and you will get a notification as soon as I post new videos. So one of the things that comes up when it comes to home automation is I've got my hub, I've got my technology, or maybe I'm just looking at that and I'm thinking I want to get started in home automation, but what am I going to automate? So today what I'm going to do is go through a list that I've compiled, my top 10 kind of areas, ideas for where you can automate your home. What are some of the most common and easiest ways to get started? So number one on my list is lighting. Lighting has got to be the simplest way and the most effective change that you can make to your house to improve your home automation. You can start with simple things like Lifex bulbs or Hue bulbs where you can simply buy a starter pack and you can change some colors and add a little bit of mood to your lighting. Uh, you can use this to have artificial sunsets, artificial sunrise, help you wake up in the morning or just simply when you come home have your lights turn on. Uh, you can use this for vacation modes when you're not home, have your lights turn on and off at specific times to help make people think you're home. So lighting is one of the easiest ways to get started with home automation. Number two on my list, and these aren't really in any specific order, they're just kind of throwing them out there, is audio. Audio is such a big part of everyone's life to start with, whether it's music, whether it's notifications, whether it's news, audio is something that you can automate within your house, really super simple. Um, one of the biggest ways to get started are with home, whole home audio systems, and usually these can be pieced together. So if you take something like the Sono system, you can buy one speaker, and right within the Sono speaker, you can set up things like automatic music schedules, you can do alarms, which bring on specific playlists at certain times. Maybe you wanna have the radio turn on when you come home at night. Uh, maybe you want to have it so the volume levels are different, so during the day it may be louder, at nighttime it might be softer, you want to have some jazz or something quieter. All of this can be automated very simple through your audio system. You can also start to add multi-room audio using uh, systems like this, whether it's a Google or an Apple system. Bose has a system, Samsung has a system. Uh, again, my favorite right now is Sonos. Uh, you can set up whole home audio where you actually group rooms together and you can have audio play in different rooms. Also part of your audio system is notifications. So whether it be simple things like having it read the news to you in the morning or letting you know what your commute to work is going to be. Next one on the list is probably one of the biggest mainstream things that have happened over the last few years and that is HVAC. Heating, ventilation, and air conditioning. Uh, and essentially the name that comes to mind I think with everyone with this is Nest. Nest was one of the first to come out with a smarter home thermostat and give us the ability to be able to uh, add some intelligence to our programming. We've always kind of had that, you know, heat the house up to this temperature and cool it to this temperature during these days. But what Nest was able to do is add the intelligence to say, hey, if I'm not home, don't bother heating the house up. Other ones have come in, um, Ecobee, Honeywell, which have added even more smarts to that, being able to use multiple sensors in different rooms, things like that. There's also other devices out there for HVAC. Uh, for example, you can have fans that you add to the registers in specific rooms. So let's say your, your heating is not getting pushed, it's not a strong enough fan on your furnace and, and you have rooms that aren't getting enough air. You could add Z-Wave enabled fans that essentially help bring the air up into different rooms or different places in your house. So there's a lot of intelligence that you can start to add to your HVAC system. All right, next up on the list, Locks and doors. Locks and doors have to be one of the biggest areas which we all forget to close, we all forget to lock. 
Um, on top of that, we need to unlock them. So let's say maybe we're away on vacation and someone needs to get access to our house to water some plants or uh, feed a pet, or maybe we have a water leak happening or some reason we wanna let people go in. The ability to remotely say open a garage door or unlock a door is something that can be really handy. And it's again, very simple way to get started. You can put on uh, keypad door locks. You can put in uh, garage door systems. If you're looking for a video, I automated mine using my voice. Link will be up here for that. There's so many different ways that you can easily start to automate the entry points to your house. And you can even use these for other reasons. Maybe you wanna know when your kids come home at night. So when they open a door, you want it to send them a notification to let you know that they've gotten into the house. Um, a really simple place to add some home automation into your system. And again, this is something you can start off really slowly. One single lock and you can open and close that door. You can have your notifications. It's a simple way to get up and running in home automation. Next up is a huge industry that many people don't think of when it comes to technology and electronics, but that is the pet industry. I was at CES in January of this year and the amount of products that they have in electronics for automating things that you do with your pets, whether it become uh, automatic litter uh, boxes that can change the litter for you. They have uh, pet doors where you can put the little doors in your back door and you put a collar on your cat or your dog. And when they get close to the door, it'll automatically unlock the pet door and lock it once they get away from it. And that way you don't have other animals coming in and out of your house. Uh, Geofencing for your pets, uh, tracking of your pets, um, all sorts of things, automatic feeders. Maybe you wanna have a feeder that lets a little bit of kibble out for your dog or for your cat. They have remote toys. They have toys where you can play with your cat remotely. You have a little camera and a laser pointer and you can control that from other locations. This is an absolutely huge industry, the pet industry in general, and adding certain degrees of automation allow you to be able to play with your, your pets, keep your pets uh, comfortable and obviously care for your pets while you're not in the home. So lots of different products out there, a lot of different innovative products, a lot of crazy products out there, uh, but home, Pet care is definitely a really big place where you can start to look at automating and taking care of your pets. Next up on the list is irrigation, sprinklers. So if you have a large lot that you need to take care of and you have a sprinkler system, uh, many people are aware of the type of sprinkler system that we've had in the past and that is very similar to a furnace or HVAC is just set a schedule and it's gonna go ahead and water it. Uh, maybe you had a little bit of smarts built in because if it rained, it didn't turn on but the new sprinkler systems and irrigation systems that we've seen coming out in the last few years have added a great deal of intelligence to them, whether it be from the amount of rain that comes down, whether it comes from very localized weather systems and controlling how it goes, right down to different types of soil and different types of vegetation that you may have. So whereas in the past you would have said, water all of my zones for 15 minutes, now you can get in and add a lot of intelligence and automation into it to say, water the front zone for less because it is a grassy area or we have perennials there or you can even get into ways of watering where you say the total water time might be 15 minutes but do it five minutes here five minutes there five minutes here and that way the water has time to actually soak in rather than just puddle and run off take that even a step further there's sensors that are available now where you can actually put them into your gardens and into your soil that will monitor the moisture levels of that soil and water appropriately next one is something that i think everyone wants a little bit of uh, again probably one of the biggest names is roomba and that's right this is house cleaning or uh, cleaning of your home so you have pool cleaners you have mops you have vacuums you have even lawnmowers that can go out and cut your grass automatically. That one scares me a little bit, I'll be honest, but the idea of being able to set up a Roomba vacuum or Samsung, LG, they, they make lots of different ones now, lots of intelligence that come with it. Some of them have cameras built in, remote controls built in. Uh, you can set schedules so that when you leave your house, it automatically knows you're gone and it goes out and vacuums your house. That way you don't have to listen to the noise that it makes or be irritated or bothered by it while you're at home. Um, same thing with your pool. They have automatic pool vacuums that can go in and clean your pool. Uh, all of this can be done using smart scheduling and home automation type products. So this is a really big area and it's a simple one and obviously a very practical area to be able to get into if you're looking to add some automation to your home. Next up is washing machines. 
Uh, again, back at CES this year, uh, washing machines and dryers were a huge area where they're starting to add automation to it. Uh, the idea of being able to notify you when things are done. Washing machines, dryers are a really big place and seem to be a really popular place that a lot of manufacturers are focusing on. Adding the intelligence back to that, they'll give you statistics of how much water have you used, how long they've been running, how much electricity you've used, uh, how many loads you've done, many, many different things that you can do. And obviously adding the intelligence back in to give you notifications, let you know when it's done. Couple that together with lighting or with your audio system, you can send notifications through at your house to say, hey, the dryer's done, come and change the load. Now this one leads me into my next category, which is very similar, but I think it deserves a spot of its own, and that is appliances. From sous vide cooking machines that can uh, be started and stopped remotely to ovens and stovetops that you can turn on, you can monitor, set temperatures, do this all remotely, uh, coffee pots, any appliance, you name it, people are looking to add some level of automation, whether or not it's reporting or statistical type of thing, remote control. Uh, fridges have become a big place. Now, I think there's still a little bit of uh, work to be done on this, but the whole idea of a fridge knowing exactly what products are inside of it. Uh, I know Samsung makes a bunch of fridge and I believe LG that fall into this category. Um, they're working with the idea of being able to look into your fridge. So for example, a camera inside your fridge. So when you're at the grocery store and you want to take a quick look inside the fridge, you can do this remotely. The other thing that we're doing with appliances is we're adding uh, the hub capabilities. So Samsung has integrated into their appliances, uh, fridges specifically, a, a touchscreen. So an idea where you can have a digital notepad for the family, voice notes, calendar, uh, essentially a, a meeting place and a hub to bring all of your smarts together. The final one that I have on my list is kind of a grouping of all of these um, that can come together, but that is the whole idea of security. Security, home automation uh, come together as a general topic, and that's because a lot of these devices that we're talking about play into helping you secure your home. So maybe that's the use of locks and doors, tie it in with your security system, notification, your hub, everything comes together. Maybe that's using your lights to turn on and off when you're on vacation, or even to help notify you when things are going on. When you come home, you can have all your lights set to red when the alarm system was on. Or at night, if there was a problem and your security system went off, the lights could all flash red to indicate a problem, help you identify what's going on. So security is definitely a place to start. I also have a video linked up above here how you can take your standard um, DSC home security system and you can add a level of home automation smart to it using um, an Visalink uh, adapter. And what this essentially does is it takes your uh, home system that you already have with all your door sensors and your motion sensors, and it allows you to control it through your smartphone. And if you want to, you can even adapt that further using something like OpenHab or Home Assistant. And you can completely control all aspects of your home security system. So that's my list of things that you can do to start getting into home automation. And the nice thing, and the reason I broke them off into those categories, is I think that they are all places that you can uh, start to dabble in it without needing to jump in with both feet. Uh, pretty much any of those options are something that you can go out and you can buy a light bulb, or you can buy a speaker, and you can use them as one-offs. Um, but if you find you're enjoying it or you want to do more with it, they all start to blend together and create a bigger system and help you build a smarter and more automated smart home. Guys, thank you so much for watching. Subscribe if you haven't. And as always, I'll see you in the next video.